playing Victory Life Church and all you wonderful people tuning in one more time to a time in the Word of God. I want to, uh, every time we get together in the Word of God, it should be liberating. It should set you free. It should, the Bible said, it's principles or precepts upon precepts. And it's all a building up. It's never a tearing down. It's always there. Um, sometimes it's like, it feels like pulling a veneer, but it is always there to cause us to walk higher in the things of God, to be more um, in tune with God, to function better. And uh, so, and again, there's no condemnation to them are in Christ Jesus. Uh, so we don't go from it, oh, you know, I feel heavy or whatever. We just accept the the uh, correction and discipline of the Lord. I want that all the time. I, every time I listen to a minister, I don't sit back and say, oh, I feel condemned now. I say, wow, that's a challenge. Or yes, that's where I'm going. Yes, I want that. Or I'm going to stop that to have uh, uh, more effect in the things of God. Well, in Romans chapter 7, it's very clear there's a man that is struggling. Um, he's torn between certain different opinions. And he says, the thing I want to do, I don't do. The things I do, I don't do. Um, I shouldn't be doing them and stuff like that. But I, he's always torn and he's always pushed over. But then comes Romans chapter 8. And remember, there is no numbers in the New Testament of uh, verses. So in Romans chapter 8, it starts out that, uh, thank God, through Christ Jesus our Lord, He's free, but that's not the only verse in that chapter. It's the beginning of the chapter. He comes in, knocks on the door. The door is Jesus, and Jesus, obviously, because he called on the name of the Lord to be saved, brings you in. And then there's about, uh, you know, 35 other verses that we got to consider after coming to Jesus. How do we deal? How do we stop being that frustrated man and uh, become what what the Lord wants us to be? Well. I can't re repeat everything I covered last week already, but I'll pick it up in verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 8. It says, To be carnally minded is dead, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And uh, another translation says, Because a carnal mind is an en enemy against God. See, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. So now we're going to act differently. It's, it's not a boring lifestyle. It is not a, you know... Um, I mean, people call Christians that are walking upright, holy rollers. We've been called and stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, we go on to read here, the wages of sin is death. The wages of those people that uh, live according to the dictates of the flesh will always, you're going to hit a wall somewhere. You will hit that wall. I have, I, I could name hundreds, uh, well, maybe not, not name them, but I've seen so many interviews of people that, that, uh, did what um, one singer sang, I did it my way, he, and they end up hitting a wall. I don't believe uh, that your life should be just, you know, like a marriage that is broken and, or, you know, and, or just plan it for five years because everybody gets divorced or plan, you know, uh, everybody has trouble in life and all kinds of stuff. I want to, like a maze, take you through, take me through a life that is, not that we're problem free. In fact, we're, I would say the problems triple the more you hot you get for Jesus Christ. But so are the victories. Because every demon in hell would try to stop you. But have no fear. Because they cannot overcome Jesus and his word and the precious Holy Spirit. The power of God. And so the Bible says to be carnal mind is, is em, an enemy or enmity against God. I think that'd be the worst place to live right now in 2023 with all the things that are happening all around us. Every one of them is, uh, is there to bring fear to your life, is, is there for you to let go of uh, every, everything, every problem area that is. You've got to consider it this way. You're so valuable and precious that the, even the devil sends some of his demons to try to take you down. Now again, uh, the saying, the devil made me do it, uh-uh, that's not a true statement. You are in control of what you allow. The carnal mind is an enmity against God, an enemy of God. And so it is telling you clearly, drop the thoughts of that carnal mind. We're going to get into the book of James here a little bit later. Um, but if we drop that and uh, flow through with the thoughts that are from the Spirit, he's going to lead us to victory, victory constant pageant of triumph you cannot erase that 
but that is only the result of the believer that stays with it and does not follow the carnal mind because that's an enemy against God. And he'll, you know, maybe he'll make it smell really good at the beginning. Maybe make it feel really good at the beginning. Maybe it looks like this is the sure way, but the Bible says there is a way unto a man, but in the end there is destruction. That is never in the path of the righteous because the Bible says the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter until the noonday or until the day when Jesus comes. It's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and more success and brighter and brighter and brighter. So wherever I've got you today, wherever you're starting from today, brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Did I say brighter and brighter yet? Always going to be brighter and brighter. So we want to get a, a, a clear understanding of what's the carnal mind because it's an enmity against God. We covered that last week. But we are not of the flesh. Or, and again, when you see the word flesh, it doesn't just mean fleshful sins, but it really means earthly. It means things that are separate of God. You make a decision and you decide not to include God into it. And the Bible talks about the, the spirit of truth, Mark chapter, uh, in, was it Mark? No, John chapter 16 and 17. It is clear, I'm sure it's in Mark too, but it is clear that there is a, uh, the Holy Spirit that was sent to lead us into all truth. And the thought behind that is when he leads you into truth, you're going to do truth. You're going to be a doer of the word of God that you so uh, uh, carefully have examined and see because the spirit of God's going to lead you into that. And so it says, but you're not carnally minded or of the flesh, but of the spirit. Uh, so be if the Spirit of God dwell in you. Thank God that we got the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That was a promise when we got born again. And again, I'm still just uh, touching on what we covered last week. The Spirit of God lives inside. Hallelujah. We're not doing it on our own power. We're not doing it by ourselves. It's the Spirit of God that is on the inside of you. And if Christ before you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Life. He's going to lead you into life and the bible when the word life appear it's life the way god has it amen it's and it's not no 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 they're not sitting there strumming harps on clouds they're not sitting there bored out of their mind oh if we could only go back to earth and have some fun i'm telling you there's not one single person that ever went to heaven that wants to come back because the life that god has and the way it is up there without any temptation or, or or the path of the flesh or anything like that is just tremendous. But here's the good news. You can have that right now on this planet. You and I can walk in the God kind of life here and now. I'm talking about health and prosperity and uh, winning all the time and love and happiness and joy. Unspeakable, the Bible says. Joy, so great and happy and laughter and, and all the things that... You know, people are trying to do with uh, maybe taking spirits, you know, like drinks and, and uh, smoking up. And, you know, but why would they do that? Why would someone, because they think there's a maybe a relief at the end of the rainbow. It's not. It's only in Jesus that we find life. Hallelujah. So the life that he has is because of righteousness. Your spirit, it says in verse um, 10, your spirits are now enjoying life because of right standing with God. Hallelujah. That's where I want to live. Amen. And again, you're not a spook. You're not somebody just running around quoting Bible verses. Get that notion out of your head. You're someone that is the most exciting, most uh, fun-loving, happy person. Good fun, that is. Not worldly fun. Good fun. And you're the one that people say, my how come he's winning? How come? Because the Bible talks about uh, that they, um, even, even the Jews, uh, when they came out of Egypt, they were loaded down with health. They were loaded down with all the wealth of Egypt, loaded down. <laughs> they were loaded down and they were happy. They were released from the prison. I mean, that's such a key story. Released from the prison because Egypt, the type of the world, never made anybody happy. And I could, I could tell you of a hundred uh, uh, different movie stars and rock stars, they're all ministers, ministers. Even I was watching stuff on bodybuilding the other day, and I thought, wow, amazing physical 
specimens. Beautiful. Looked wonderful. But you know what? Then they go off cycle. They use ingredients and it's not real. And it's so discouraging to think you can't keep that up. And then there's a list of all of them that died, usually in their 30s and 40s, because they took worldly wisdom to get big and to, to look wonderful. Or even the wrestlers, how many? The list is so long to, uh, you know, they did certain something um, that, that contradicted what was wisdom. The wisdom from above would say, no, don't do that. It's going to hurt your heart. It's going to harden your arteries. It's going to cause your body to deteriorate. You can't maintain that. that that's, it's so clear. And it's just to me, it's like, all right, you know, well, you know, we'll wait for a body like that when we get to the other side. I don't know. I don't know if they're handing them out like that. But uh, anyways, uh, th that is earthly wisdom to try to live a short life. I've heard athletes, Olympic athletes say, I know this is killing me, but we're going to do this be for the little glory, a little trophy, a little medal around your chest. That's a vain glory. That's not the way God wants us to live. All right. And so it says we have the Holy Spirit. We're talking to say about shutting the flesh up. We're going to do some things to shut the flesh up. So the Bible goes on to say, but ye, brethren, are not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh, for you, are not, you, for you live not after the flesh, but by and through the Spirit uh, who lives in you. And what does he do in verse 13? Uh, but if ye through the Spirit, you mortify the deeds of the flesh. That means my flesh is screaming at me, do this, do that, take this pill, um, you know, look at this Playboy magazine, or whatever it is. The flesh profits you nothing. And so we want to make sure that uh, we, the Bible says mortify the deeds of the flesh. And again, I want to emphasize when you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you will be so happy. And again, that doesn't mean you don't have sex with a married partner. You know, uh, it means you uh, are not open to the worldly way of doing things and uh, the way the flesh would scream at you. You could overeat. You could uh, do things that are, you could rob banks, all the things that, you know, the deeds of the flesh, the things that separate from God, what your mind is trying to tell you to do. Flesh doesn't mean skin and bones. It means carnality, uh, that area. We got to, we get to shut that down. We get to uh, stop that. And so uh, for you are, uh, many of that are led, verse 14, by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not re received the spirit of adoption again. I want to take you to the book of James because uh, it is very clear. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible first. It says, But if you are bitter, jealousy, envy, con contentious, rivalry, selfish ambition uh, in your heart, do not pride yourself or on that and thus be in defiance of or against the Word of God. So if you're tasting bitterness in your mouth against somebody, maybe somebody got a promotion, a promotion or whatever, um, and you didn't get it, and all of a sudden you get bitter, from that moment on, you're going to start making decisions that are carnal, and they're going to take you down a path that you don't want to go. Sin takes you further down the path. path uh, it, it makes you do things and pays a heavier price than you ever wanted to pay. And uh, so watch this here. Uh, I'll go back to that verse, but the Bible is very clear in the 15th chapter of James chapter 4. The wisdom or the thoughts that come from above, the wisdom, this wisdom descend is not from above. What I just read, this list, I'll go back over it again. That wisdom does not come from God or from above. God's got wisdom, information, answers that comes from above. But it is, and then there are three categories. Write this down. It's, it's James 4.15. This wisdom is not from above, but is earthly, sensual, or devilish. Or another translation says it comes from the world, from your lower nature, or even from the devil. World, lower nature, or sensual, or the devil. World, lower nature, and the devil. Uh, everything can be put into an equation. Um, the other day, I, right in the morning, I woke up and boom, it just seemed they were waiting for me. The, the most fearful thoughts, the most um, demonic uh, pressure on my heart. 
And, and it's like, ah, uh, that's not from above. I know God never speaks like that. That was from the camp of the devil. So I went downstairs, uh, still feeling, feeling that pressure. It's not, it's not from above. It's earthly, sensual, or devilish. So no, it's not sensual. It's not from my lower nature. Every fear thought. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. God never operates through the spirit of fear. That is obviously a no-brainer. It's a free one. The devil overplayed his hand. I realized it was the devil, uh, full blast, or one of his agents. And uh, so basically it's like, no, I'm going to praise my way out of this situation. So I went back and, and uh, I thought, I'm going to resist that thought of fear. I know it comes from the three lower doors. There's one door from above. Let me say it again. This wisdom is not from above. That's the only one we want. But the other, it's earthly or carnal, sensual or uh, worldly or devilish. We don't want those. But watch these words here. So let's say you have bitterness start in your heart. It could happen between civil, uh, 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 well, civil rivalry. Uh, between uh, brothers and sisters. It could be jealousy. Maybe you got a better car. Anytime it starts, stop it. You can, especially when it just starts. All of a sudden you feel that little prick and, well, they got a better car. I'm going to get an even better car. You know, there's no God in that. You know, not that you're not supposed to have a new car, but don't have the motivation of jealousy. Don't be bitter because of someone else's promotion or whatever. Or maybe they're, you think they're better looking than you. That is an insult to God. Because he made you. He knows. He formed you in your mother's womb. He made you exactly the way you're supposed to do. Do the best with what you got. We all need to do that. You know, uh, make ourselves look as best as we can. But don't ever complain about the Creator. That is a sign that your your people hustle and bustle. I heard someone they had put $500,000 into their face alone. Ay ay ay, And they looked horrible. A little puff here and a little puff here. Why? I'm just not happy with the way I look. Why? Who told you you look bad? Well, the mirror did. Well, that's not wisdom from above. That's carnality. That's earthly or or flesh. Carnality. Earthly, sensual, or devilish. You know, probably not devilish, but it's like you. Oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have more. Why would you do that? Why would you want to, to uh, um, you know, just try to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak? So anytime, it's so easy to understand what is flesh, bitter, jealousy, envy, uh, contention, rivalry, rivalry. Maybe it's the um, yeah, company across the street, or maybe it's, uh, um, again, there's good, healthy sports and all that kind of stuff, but that is, I guess, called rivalry. But when it takes on an evil turn, you know, be careful that uh, th these are things from below. And uh, they may not lead, lead to death all of a sudden, but... Recognize them for what they are. Oh, I had a jealous. You know, that was jealousy. My motive was wrong. God judges motives. You know, I'm I'm preaching because I want a name. If that is if that is the reason you're doing it, get out of the pulpit, because there's no flesh glory. There's no glory in uh, doing something like that, because God judges the motives of the heart too, and we want to only do from the wisdom above. It is. Um, don't pride yourself or reject the truth. Okay, so in the Amplified, it says, the wisdom is not such as comes down from above. We need that one, but it's earthly, unspiritual, animal, even devilish or demonic. We don't want those. And that corresponds with what we're reading about in Romans chapter 8, where the Spirit has come in. Now he's set up shop on the inside of us. He's, a, he's ready to, you know, as you progress in this day, he wants to lead and guide you into all truth. All truth. He's going to show you things to come. And I want to finish with this verse here today. Um, it says, uh, wherever there is jealousy, there is contention, rivalry. So it starts with jealousy, then comes contention, rivalry, selfishness, ambition. Tuk, 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 tuk. You go down the road, and at the end you say, how did we ever get here? It started with the first thought that was not from above. There will also be confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. And the Bible actually, in one translation, says every evil work shows up. So when you go down the road of uh, disharmony, you know, uh, always be in harmony, always walk in love, 
you know, which is the door from above. But disharmony, diffusion, unrest, rebellion, all that will never, ever, 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 ever be from above. It will never, ever give you the peace and that passes all understanding. It will never lead you down the path where God wants you to go. You can never rob a, rob a bank and, and go home and say, thank God for the million dollars I have now. I'm going to tie the, you know, the first hundred thousand. But praise God, if it wouldn't have been for his blessing, I, w I could have never robbed that bank. And that'll never, ever, ever, ever happen. No, the wisdom that is from that door that is above is simply this here. It is first pure undefiled then it is peace loving this is verse 17 of james 4. how does that feel in your spirit man oh i got an unrest it's if it's not peace loving you got no business being over there first of all it's pure undefiled you know that this is right it is courteous and the, see the spirit and this word agree all the time spirit word agree where does the spirit come from romans 80 says that god sent us the Holy Spirit and he searches what is from God and what is different. And Romans, um, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the same thing. The sword of the Spirit cuts between what is flesh and what is spirit. So first, pure, peaceable. It yields to reason. How many people could you not talk to in the last two years about anything? No, I have my opinion. Instead of, hey brother, tell me about that situation. What? Why are you have you been informed about that? Tell me, help me. I know you love me. You know, that was so far from what was happening last year. Full of compassion and good fruits. It is wholehearted, straightforward, impartial, unfeigned, free from doubt, wavering, and insincerity. I know that deserves another hour teaching right now. Maybe we'll pick it up there next week. But you do a list yourself. Go to James 4, 17 and say, these are the tracks that I'm going to walk on, you know, pure, undefiled, willing to listen to reason, all these different things. Do some homework. Take an Amplified Bible. You can get it online. Um, you know, even that verse, dial it in and live in a constant pageant of triumph. Anyways, that's all the time I have for you today. If you have any more questions, call us at 250-862-3044. We'd love to chat with you. Come and make Jesus the Lord of your life. Anyways, have a great and amazing rest of the day.